Well, here I am again with another week's analysis behind the news. Something that I noticed yesterday in the uh, Sunday New York Times was the Port Huron Statement at 50. In other words, the 50th anniversary of the Port Huron Statement by the Students for a Democratic Society, or SDS. Uh, an organization that was behind a great deal of the violence and demonstrations in the 1960s and 70s. And it has a photograph on, uh, of them on here, uh, the people that did this, the hierarchy of the SDS. And they all have a salute. They're all giving the salute, well, almost all of them, and that is this, or this. And this is the communist salute. Any organization, any movement that uses this, I don't care what they call themselves, that is the communist salute. They know it, you don't. That's usually been the case. Most Americans are not educated up to understand a lot of these nuances of the very enemies that they fight. And there's not much difference between that and what Hitler had. This was pride. This is anger. Pride goeth before a fall. And the pride that the, that the Germans had, it, it let, led them lockstep into that horrible thing that became World War II, the Holocaust, and everything else. But the difference between the Nazi movement and the communist movement, by and large, was pride versus anger. Uh, they didn't have much difference in their, in their political uh, philosophy. It was based on Marxism, both of them. Uh, they did the same things. Uh, Hitler was Stalin light, basically. Uh, that doesn't mean that he wasn't bad. It's just a matter of how many millions did Stalin kill versus how many millions did Hitler kill. Hitler never came up to the level of, of Stalin, but Stalin won World War II uh, and uh, kept a lot of territory as a result. At any rate, the subtitle in here is The Occupy Movement Has SDS to thank for its participatory democracy. That's getting very close to the truth about what this Occupy movement is all about. Because the SDS was the, the brainchild, the, 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 the child, really, of the Communist Party. Uh, it, it was started out of the League for Industrial Democracy, which was the Socialist Party, but the Communists pretty much took it over very quickly. We see in today's Wall Street Journal that Putin has won. Now, that's a surprise, isn't it? Uh, and it's talking about a disputed victory. And all the way through this newspaper, it's talking about uh, voter fraud in Russia and other places, uh, and never mentions once voter fraud in the United States. And believe me, it is going on. We have three states for sure. Well, not for sure. Two probably, uh, one for sure, one more than likely, and one, one that statistically points to voter fraud. Uh, Maine is no question in the Republican primary that that election was fraudulent in its results. Iowa was such a problem that the state chairman of the Republican Party resigned and the vice chairman of the Ron Paul campaign became the new state chairman of the Republican Party. And in Nevada, we believe that the voting machines are controlled by the same people who control the gambling slot machines. And they're both designed not to win. The Reid election, this last election uh, cycle, uh, was indicative of it being very, very different from the polls. Uh, the exit polls and the regular polls going into it were completely different from what the election office issued as its final tally. Way off. And, by the way, the, uh, the polls that were taken prior to the recent Republican uh, primary uh, were, were off tremendously. Uh, usually polls, you can say they might be off 15%. Uh, these polls were off 75% in the state of Nevada. And, and then we see more election problems. Uh, here, for instance, this is a good one, though. At least that's what we're told in this article, that, Beige that this Wukong vote offers Beijing a new path. This is a new path for communism, uh, you know, uh, uh, the totalitarian government in China. And we learn that this uh, Lin Zulian 
who gained national attention after he and other villagers chased out the local government out of town over alleged land grabs and other misdoings. Wow, this guy is opposed to this totalitarian government in China. This is a wonderful thing, isn't it? And it's a new path. Until we read further into the article, we find out that this guy, this Mr. Lin, is, was appointed as the Communist Party chief of Wukan. So we see both on the back page of the first of the front of the first section that the opposition to corruption is the Communist Party. And we see on the front page in this election with Putin that the opposition to the Kremlin is what it says in this article is the Communist Party. Now, since when has the Communist Party been in opposition to the Kremlin? It doesn't make any sense. But this is the kind of stuff that they give you in the newspapers. Uh, there's some other things in here that are kind of interesting. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower, quiet radical. It, it talks about something in here and doesn't even tell you what it's saying. It says here, for instance, uh, See if I can find it here real quick. It talks about uh, the uh, interstate. Here it is. He also led the nation into the space age and the development of a new containment strategy that served the nation well until its communist oppo opponent collapsed and left America unchallenged as the world's only superpower. Now, hear this. You might reflect on his vision while driving on I-95 or other cement stretches of the Eisenhower National Highway System. Now, it's interesting that they talk about this without telling you what they're talking about. It's in the same paragraph where we defeated communism. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a paragraph that covers one subject. And all of a sudden it goes into I-95 or, or whatever. The thing about it is this. The interstate highway system was built to house or, or contain the traffic for intercontinental uh, ballistic missiles. I know, I was involved in the R&D at the time on the Minuteman missile in Boeing. And we were designing those to be uh, put on the back of trucks. And those trucks were to drive down the interstate highways uh, so that the enemy, the communists, would never know where they were so that they couldn't lob, on a first strike, atomic weapons over and blast out our silos or our launching sites because they would never know where they were. They might be in De Detroit, they might be down uh, between Denver and Boulder, uh, Colorado, they, nobody would know. Uh, the American people wouldn't even know, except the containers would be pretty obvious. Uh, and so that was the system that we were putting together. And it was also to be on the back of, of uh, railroad cars so that if we had a problem, the trucks or the railroads would stop. They would raise the rockets and shoot them off. And now uh, what we have is a, a set silo system where they're all put in silos where everybody knows where they are all the time. And GPS will pinpoint any kind of a, an attack for anyone who wants to take them out. They say that they're immune to atomic uh, attack unless they're a direct hit. Well, GPS gives you a direct hit capability, okay? <laughs> At any rate, that's the sort of thing that, that we do. But in, in that article, it doesn't explain this to you. It just says, uh, be happy for his foresight and vision uh, in regard to defeating communism by driving down the cement highways without having any understanding of what's being said at all. With that, I think I'll quit for this week. I'll see you next week. Until then, so long.